Which brings us to our next segment. Who does Christy have a grudge with this week? <laughs> Welcome to a more Philly Union, the podcast where we swear to talk about the Philly Union, the whole Philly Union, and nothing but the Philly Union with as few digressions as possible. We are your hosts. I'm E. I'm C. And I'm Paul. And I'm leaving that intro in because I knew we were trying not to laugh, and I'm leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I broke. Go. I broke. We're we're doing this in one one take, folks. Doing it in one. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're coming at you a little late this week, but let's um, you know, it's the off week, so we're cutting everybody slack. Um, right, let's get to the housekeeping first. Uh, the help us help you help us help the union challenge is still trucking along. We're at up to 760 downloads that's 33 more downloads since the previous week um you know i know we probably have some newish listeners and that you know states that have downloaded before but for all the new listeners hey welcome thanks for downloading uh we are we trying to what to help us help the you challenges real quick yep so we kind of made this challenge back at the beginning of the season i mean we we're starting this up and basically we kind of picked uh, a thousand downloads as our goal. When we hit that thousand downloads, we're going to make a donation to the um, Union Philly Foundation. Union Foundation. That's right. Um, so originally we thought we were going to hit up before the end of the season, but as trends are going, it's going to be a little close. So uh, any extra help we can get by spreading the word to get these downloads, um, that's just that much sooner we make our donation. And um, so, yeah, spread the word and let's do some good. All right. Well, it's been, uh, what do you call it? It's the international break. Uh, it's kind of a, a little bit of a downtime for um, us here in MLS. Um, so Union had no games uh, this past week, um, but there was a couple things that we could talk about that's happened. Um, first up, um, arguably one of our favorite defenders, yeah. uh, Kai Wagner. Um Paul, you started this kind of train of thought this week when you shared that link. I think it was Paul was you. Yeah, it was a postseason the- or post game uh, conversation with Kai, where he he basically stated that this was going to be his last season in Philadelphia. Um, you know, it was it wasn't his decision. It was uh, just how things are going, and, and and you know that he just he just made it clear to this reporter that it was his last season in Philly, which you know. We kind of all figured was going to be happening because yeah. you know his contract is up. But we were all hoping that it was going to be you know be the last season in Philadelphia because he was getting a transfer to somewhere that he wanted to be playing. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's a little bit of the burying my head in the sand. Um, yeah, I'd like for us to keep Kai. Um, seeing that quote about him saying this is probably my last year in in Philly and. Um, and I saw something, I don't know if it was Kurt or somebody else saying that, you know, to the extent of, you know, trying to, trying to work something out, but, you know, if they can't, they can't. And it's like, uh, it feels like the writing's on the wall a little bit. And then Paul, you sent out that link with the, uh, the video about Kai yeah. and his family becoming friends with, uh, one of the, you- one of the fearless 43. Yeah. Yeah. So this month is also uh, childhood cancer awareness month. Um, and you know, so the union kind of picked 43 kids in local hospitals that were fighting cancer. And one of them was this little girl whose name escapes me. Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and and apparently Kai really connected with her and and it almost sounded more like Kai's wife really connected (laughs) with uh, Charlotte's mom. But well, there was that part though, because they were talking about how the, all the players were kind of saying hi to the kids. And I guess Charlotte was, you know, understandably, she's a little kid, she's a little shy. But Kai made a point to come back to her and like mm-hmm. really try to ingratiate himself with her. And it kind of it really left a, a lasting impression. But go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a really wonderful video. Was that on Instagram? No, it's on, I think Is I saw it on, it on the website. I, I it's on Instagram. Oh, it's on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure they shared it multiple places. Yeah, I'm sure it's like on their video section of the union's website. So 
Um, yeah, but it was a real nice, like three, four minute video about this girl and her family and how they kind of got tight with the Wagners. Um, and, 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 you know, like now this girl is, they didn't use the term remission, but seems to be very much close to that level of, of, of treatment. Like she's almost mm-hmm. wrapped her current, uh, round of treatments and is looking very positive. And like, yeah. you know, there's picture video of, of this little girl running around with Kai's boys and they're all playing, you know, yeah. this girl has a little sister and, and, you know, it, it just seems like the families are really tight mm-hmm. for like 90 plus percent of this video. It seems like a kind of a, a little bit of a play on Kai's emotion to try to get him to stay. And then, <laughs> you know, like with 20 seconds left in the video, it kind of takes this twist where it's yeah. like the mom of Charlotte says, yeah. you know, wherever Kai goes in his career, whether that's here with, uh, with the union or, or overseas or wherever, he'll always have, he'll always be a part of our family here in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it was like, Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you, when, when you said that link and you made that comment about, it's like, uh, like a, Basically, what you just said it's all ninety percent great, and that last that last twist at the end, it's like, oh. So I'm watching it. I'm like, "What's Paul talking about? This is great." And then the mom says that. I'm like, "Oh no!" This yeah. is like you said. It's like a little. It's a nice, sweet little farewell message to Kai. I'm like, "Oh no, don't!" But I guess I'm confused because I'm sorry that I did not see this. Um, uh, the interview that you're talking about. I, I mean, the video is one thing, but if it's not his choice but he has what's ha- i don't what's I, going on or, or are we all unclear on that because uh, well like is I'm, somebody I'm reaching out between with the more lines, money or you're yeah, not reading sure. between the lines i assume it's you know he has a certain expectation for a contract if it's going to be extended it's got to be extended at a certain value mm-hmm. um or with certain other uh, arrangements in it mm-hmm. and they weren't prepared to give him those um concili- cons- those sort of agreements. Considerations. Yeah. Yeah. Considerations. I was thrown by the words, but I have to take it. It sounds like there's an offer on the table from someone else. No, it sounds like he's, you know, I don't think he said, I have to take it. Okay, um, so that's you know, not It's quote. not his decision, essentially, as to this being his last season in Philadelphia. Uh, he's got a contract that runs out at the end of the season. If he doesn't get a new contract that he likes from the union, he'll probably be plying his trade elsewhere. Okay, um, that's that's what threw me because I I we have uh, like I mentioned before for our notes um, there's a phrase in there but I think mm-hmm. that was a paraphrase then not a direct quote. So no, that, that actually that is a direct, direct quote. quote. I have to say um, okay because yeah. that just sounds like the, there's something else on the table. I, I don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Paul, I agree with you. Like, there's there's really no information out there that's very specific, but I do get to feel uh, that it's. Kai wants certain things. I don't know if it's money or time or whatever, but it sounds like yeah, that, I understand that. Yet. I just I, I thought perhaps I yeah. missed uh, a fact, a factoid here. But yeah, unfortunately, but, we just don't have any details yeah. about exactly right. what's okay. being negotiated yeah. between Kai's group and the union. Mm-hmm. But the one interesting, I read an article about it, and they raised the question that I never really thought about. I just assume if Kai's not with the union, he's going to go back back to Europe. But they actually raised the question about him going somewhere else. Somewhere else in MLS. And it's like, nope, 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 nope. I can't say nope enough times. It's like, uh, like, yeah. um, Yeah, don't do that. If you leave, go to Europe or don't don't stay in MLS. Don't pull Uh, Ray Gaddis on us. Yeah, don't. (laughs) And, you know, we all love Ray, too. But we do. It's just, oh, it's anyway. Well, well, what are they going to do with all the socks with the holes in them? <laughs> <laughs> Your socks have holes. They do. You guys. They really do. They do. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's kind of Kai Watch 2024 or 2023. It's like, you know, is he, where is he going to end up? Yeah. Uh, it's not impossible to think, to think that something could be arranged, but it's looking less and less likely for him. It feels like it's the, um, now it's not really the same, but it's just like we're waiting for the end of the season and it's kind of like with beta breath and it doesn't look very promising that he's going to stick around. It's like the opposite. Remember when Hackworth got the permanent position and the first thing he did was bring back Sebastian Latou. I think Chris, you like texted me or something like that. Like, <laughs> Latou's coming back. I'm like, what? 
you know, <laughs> and it was just like absolute jubilation, you know. December 6th. St. <laughs> Nicholas Day. There you go. It's my St. Nicholas present that yeah, year. Yeah, that was, that was, a, could not be topped. But, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. And we're talking transfers. We can move into the next topic, which is mm-hmm. uh, Julian Carranza, who apparently did not get any, uh, yeah. uh, a, a transfer agreement settled in this window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, Curtin made a comment about how basically the window opened and then it closed and no, um, no contract or no offer was actually, um, came to fruition obviously um but it does sound like there was definitely interest um i don't doubt that yeah i'm not surprised by that either um yeah i almost wonder if it was that the interest was from teams that he wasn't so interested in yeah i wonder yeah and you know while the union certainly want to get a payday for him they also want to make sure he ends up where he wants to be and Mm -hmm. um you know, I'm sure he has some sort of rights of refusal in his contract. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you uh, want to give this quote from uh, from Curtin? It's a good one. I don't know if you want to read this one out. That second paragraph. Oh, so yeah. So there there were a couple of good quotes um, um, that um, Jim Curtin said with his three guards to Carranza. Right. The one was, uh, "I always still stress to the players, you're remembered most for how your seasons end." So yes, the transfer didn't work out this time for Julian. I think it's no secret that uh, winter is a real possibility. So we'll have him here till the end of the end of the season. And my message to him is to con- continue to score goals, make a run at the Golden Boot, and let's try to lift the trophy together. Yeah, um, um, yeah. So it's definitely like a vote of confidence from Curtin. Um, I, it sounds like they just didn't find the right uh, matchup. Um, but uh, yeah, and then the second quote, which I'm not going to read, but it's just basically uh, Curtin just stressed how um, Kranz is still young, and yeah. he's, he's already this good, and he's still with us. So um, you know, it says two things: one, that players of this caliber are sticking around maybe a little bit more with teams like us in the MLS, um, and uh, yeah, and hopefully that that means that that's something more about our league growing. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's it's great that um, you know, he's getting the interest. Um, I think it's great that he's we're sure that he's sticking around. He doesn't have that waiting of you know lifting uh, it's over his head now. It's like all right, it didn't happen now, so I can concentrate on where I am and and make the most out of this opportunity. And hopefully he does. Hopefully this makes him hungry to to, to prove to these mm-hmm. clubs that they should have come get him earlier. Mm-hmm. You know, go run up a bunch of goals for the union for the rest of this season and into the postseason. So his contract is not over at the end of the season. That's, it doesn't sound like it. I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know it, the status of his pro, of his contract, but I would agree that that's what it sounds like. Right, because with Wagner, it's like, yeah, when the season's over, there's no contract and he'll be a free agent and he can kind of do whatever he wants. When Curtin says that um, it's no secret that winter is a real possibility, um, but to me that implies like unless something else happens over the winter break, he will probably still be here at the start of next season. My guess is at the very least, if they don't have him locked up on a contract year next year, they at least have a a option. Yeah. They're Mm -hmm. making it clear they're going to exercise for him. Yeah. Keep him around. You know, this discussion is making me wonder and i know we lightly agreed we weren't going to mention the m word uh during this but i'm, I'm going to say it anyway so uh, the fact that messi is in the league now mm. um you know we've talked a lot about what that means for fans in the mls in general but what does it mean to the players does it for some, some certainly not all they're not all the same but does it sort of raise the the uh, value of Gosh, the MLS yeah. to the players yeah. you know, and make them think, you know, not necessarily like, oh, I got to play against Messi or with Messi, but, you know, does it, is it sort of like, well, if it's good enough for Messi, then it's good enough for me for now, as long as they're making mm-hmm. the money they want to make and the progress they want to make and that kind of thing. I mean, I, it doesn't make us. Uh, I would expect you know, that you're right, yeah. you know, at least to an extent. Yeah, it's that, that a raising tide. A little bit of a. Lifts all boats. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Because I, you know, we use that 
wording, that symbol, that that image of the center of gravity of the soccer universe shifted towards MLS when Messi joined. And it's like, yeah. And um, I got to imagine people look at the marketing profile, cross-section, whatever the fancy words are, but basically more eyes are on MLS now that Messi's here. And more eyes usually translates to more money. More money translates more towards, you know, uh, overall improvement. And so... And just status. And you status, know? right? And so, yeah. yeah Interesting. Too, I mean. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, when they discover oil in your hometown and now all of a sudden house prices go up, right? So, um, you, know, may, you know, maybe... Carranza is worth more, you know, if if they trade him over the winter break this year than just a year ago without Messi being in the league. But that's the only good thing we're going to say, I think, with regard to. <laughs> but, but I yeah. meant actually for yeah. him yeah, yeah, too yeah. that he he has maybe a, a little bit more, you know, that much more self worth. Yeah. But, you know, I, if if he does have those rights of refusal and stuff, like, I'm not saying inflated ego. I'm just saying. You know, like, yeah, I don't have to go and play there where I don't want to go just, you know, because they're offering me this. I can maybe hold out and, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and go to this other side, better yeah. or more interesting team. Yeah. So, yeah. For- or maybe I want to stay in MLS because, again, good enough for Messi. Yeah. It's good enough for me. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. A couple thoughts there, really. Yeah. So, yeah, it was. It was- It'll be a Carranza watch over the winter for sure. <laughs> yeah. Kai, Kai, at the end of the season, Carranza during the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, at least we'll have yeah. something to talk about in, you know, January. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, paying more attention. I mean, I always pay attention to the games, and, but with doing the podcast, we've been paying yet closer attention this year. Um, <laughs> whether it sounds like it or not, depending on which episode <laughs> you listen to. Um but I, I think that some of it'll it's going to smooth out some of the the bumps that never really happen in the you know time between seasons where it's like what they they traded so and so or mm-hmm. who's this guy I think you know yeah. <laughs> for us at least it'll be a little bit more like oh yeah. well that's sad but yeah, yeah I kind of saw that I saw coming. that coming <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So we'll have to see. I hope that Carranza ends up somewhere good. And, and yeah. in the meantime, enjoy enjoy him scoring goal or scoring yeah. goals for the union for as long as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Scoops absolutely. is gonna boycott. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next and wherever Carranza winds up, she shows up wearing that team's jersey. Yeah. It's like, oh boy. Yeah, there she's gonna wear red to the stadium. Oh well, well, well. she's, <laughs> she's on her own. <laughs> she's on her own. <laughs> She's sitting uh, on her own for sure for this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bye, um, okay. Um, well, moving from individual players to the whole team, uh, the health report is really positive for uh, the union. Pretty much with two exceptions, arguably, uh, the entire team's in good health. Or, like No injuries. They're ready to go. Um, Flock, um, which I... I, I wasn't sure what the issue was, but the article I read is um, he's, his injury is a sports hernia. Um, and I don't know if he had traveled to Germany, but they had made a um, mention mention that he like they got a, a, a second opinion in Germany. So I don't know if he was over there for evaluation, but apparently there's a, a, a different procedure available in Germany that not here in the U.S. that if it works, Flock could be back within um, two weeks. Uh, so I oh guess my they're, gosh! Yeah, they're seriously considering that. So um, I'm just ma- imagining a series of very Spartan treatments. <laughs> <laughs> Two tonic spanks. <laughs> Two tonic spanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, it's going to involve like uh, some black turtlenecks administering them. Hot water bottles and running five miles in the rain. Pretty much. Yeah. There, you're all better now. Followed by a cold plunge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we love Germany. No, we um, we do. <laughs> we kid because we care. Yes. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, the other was uh, Bueno uh, during his international um, um, obligations yeah. playing for Venezuela, um, and the quote was knocked his knee. Uh, so I think they he actually subbed out during the game, um, but um, again, according to Curtin, uh, his press conference that um, Bueno's training with the team again, and he's feeling fine so i guess there's just they're just watching him but it's he seems to be training and feeling um uh, no setbacks from this knock is such in. a wonderfully catch-all sports yeah term for 
yeah, he not hurt himself, name. and we don't know what it is, and we don't really. Or want we're to not comment. saying. Yeah, we're not saying. It feels like that, or when it happened, like someone, you know, some six-year-old uh, um, paramedics, Drift. like, quick, get some leaves, you know, <laughs> <laughs> rub some dirt in it. Yeah. Who's yeah. got to go tell his mom? I'm not. We'll have to see what happens with yeah. Bueno and Gaj Dog as well. So um, hopefully they'll be back yes. and back mm-hmm. to full speed soon because we need them for this final push at yeah. the end of the season. It is a shame. I I got to imagine both of them are, are going to be held out for the uh, Cincinnati game at least. Yeah, that's going to be a big one. Um, yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, talking about chasing the top of the table. We can certainly talk about top of the West. Yeah, let's take a little departure. Let's head out West. Um, and continuing their Cinderella story, if, if that's the correct use of the phrase. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Louis is, yeah, they are just having a great Showing season. Showing everybody how it's done. Apparently, yeah. Much, they're yeah. First place, seven points ahead. Um, they have six games remaining. I mean, this is, by every measure, probably this is the St. Louis's, um, this is their league whatever their 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 conference to lose thank you that's where this is their conference to lose um which is great i mean it's just awesome i mean one they're just obviously playing great too st louis has wanted a team for so long and man if heart makes if, if absence makes the heart grow fonder it's translating on the field here but man and has a pretty strong soccer tradition oh, yeah. like a lot of players who've come from there yeah they had a team before this team, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the, the USL sad, team. Yeah. They sadly disbanded. Um, yeah. in, in I mean, even if you go back to the 1950s world, 1950 world cup, half that U S team came from St. Louis. Really? Yeah. And the other half came from New York city and it was the well, only no team perfect. I believe so far to beat, uh, England in a, in a world cup game. It was like that should be made into a movie. It has been. <laughs> I think it was called Game of Their Life or something like that. Um, so yeah, we are we're very happy for St. Louis. Um, you know, for both sports and more familiar reasons. But um until they face off against the union, in which case You're uh, going down. <laughs> <laughs> Bitter enemies. I imagine Maybe well, gently, but you're going down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have to make some uh, some very fun, friendly uh, wages with people if and when that game actually comes to be. Maybe maybe we reach out and see if we can have a guest on. Yeah, we'll have to pull in uh, some St. Lu- St. St. Louisians. St. Louisian. Um, I call yeah. them St. Louisians because I like that better. But, yeah, St. Yeah. Louisians. We'll get them on. We'll get them on the show. We'll, we'll do a little. Uh, yeah, well, well, let's do that. God, where if, are you going to find somebody from St. Louis? I know. Hmm. We have a very, uh, <laughs> very large family there in St. Louis. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Quick side uh, story. What, what's, our, what's our participant limit on Zoom? Uh, yeah. that, right? It's like, guys, we're only allowed 40 people. We've got to cycle people in and out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in January, uh, Chris and I were back there for a little family reunion. And it was just so funny. Just all these people talking about the you know cousins aunts uncles all talking about uh the new team coming to st louis and they're just all super excited by it so uh, yeah i mean and all but a few are, are pretty much like diehard yeah cardinals baseball folks. oh yes yeah. yeah. um but they're they're stoked about yeah. this they're definitely willing to give it yeah. a go even if they're not uh you know necessarily yeah. the biggest soccer followers or weren't at the time yeah. so it's uh exciting for them and for us Oh, good for St. Louis. Yeah. I mean, so um, I'll admit I'm a little bit of, uh, you know, sour grapes here because, you know, it's their freaking first game season know, in this in I the know. league. And I know. Yeah. It takes I know. the union like, you know, 20 years to build up a, you know, had esteem to be consistently at the top. Had to get the academy, yeah. had to grow the embryos for the academy. Yeah. This is very so. <laughs> <laughs> to I know matrix it wasn't them really up real 20 quick. years, but I mean, it was like 10 years before the union consistently were doing well. Oh, yeah, you know? it was. It was they, had, they had a couple of good years early on, uh, but I mean, what was it, 2018 or whatever was the first year they made it to the playoffs for the union? But, yeah. yeah. And then we did make it once really early, I think, because I remember 
Is Peter Novak the coach? I don't I'm not sure, but I do remember taking Nate up to New York when he was small and having to cover But up that the, wasn't a playoff game. Wasn't it? I don't think Why so. Why else would we have gone though if it wasn't? Now I'm just digressing. Yeah. I'm, I'm violating our tagline. We should um yeah, first time. Yeah, <laughs> first time it's ever it's as few <laughs> as digressions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks to that 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 one little phrase, we're keeping the digressions to about fifty percent of the episode. Because without right. it, it'd be like ninety five percent. You know, the well, only part of the Philly Union we talk our... about would be the intro, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the episodes would be three hours long. So, yeah. Um, yeah anyway, yeah. Do we want to talk about Miami or do the we other M word? Yeah, I'm no. fine. Just moving on. You know what? Next. Let's not worry about Next. it. Next, we it's, had one M word yeah. that yeah. I already broke. Right. So I'm going to cut so, this part out. No, yeah. let's not worry about my week. Next topic. <laughs> Next. Next. Next song. Sorry, go on. Go All on. right. Well, hey, it's great watching St. Louis do the thing. Best of luck for them. And at least we games. can watch all of the teams now because they're all on Apple TV, even if they end up, you know, happening pretty much right on top of each other. But I, I did, you know, I know the next topic that we had here is I wanted to kind of get your guys' impression of, of Apple TV and where it's grown and evolved so far this season. Obviously, start of the season, it was pretty eh, rough. It was. They had <laughs> definitely things to work out on their end. I mean, both hours with tech support. Yeah, exactly. That both I will never get back. Both the technical side of it, where it just seemed like we couldn't get the system to work the way we wanted. It was showing scores we didn't want to know uh, about. It, know, was, was... it was just not streaming when you thought it should. It, you know, this, that, or the other thing technically was was just tr- causing trouble. And then the announcers. Oh, my God. Some of those announcers were so bad. Mm-hmm. so bad like i mean seriously like just just tur- just turn their mics off and let me listen to the crowd <laughs> would have been better um as opposed to where they're at now i mean yeah you know. I, i'll admit like i think when we watch but i'll just talk about from my point mm-hmm. of view um yeah we pretty much tune into the game um mm-hmm. i remember the beginning of the of the um season and they had their whole Whatever the MLS 360 when they had like the panel yep. of four comment uh, commenters, uh, and they were like, kind of like 15 minutes here and there on each game. Um, I mean, that's kind of interesting. That would be nice to have like on it on on a TV like in a bar if you're just kind of like just seeing what's going on in the league if you're not worried about a particular game. But um, in terms of like watching at home, eh, you know, it's I mean, it's fine. It's it's kind of like an extra feature that I don't know if we really need uh, from our viewing point of view, but. Um, yeah, you know, but I don't know. I wonder if that was designed for people who were like, I don't really know much about this yeah. MLS thing, but I'll yeah. give it a try. And then, you know, kind of giving you an overview of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, the, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not really sure who it was for. Yeah. Um, I mean, I liked it. I mean, it's, you know, Sasha Kleschen, uh Bradley Wright Phillips. Um, mm-hmm. Who else? Um, it felt like something they would do late night on the world. Cup yes, kind of. that's exactly you know, like what that from like. a, yeah. Maybe I say late night. I mean, I know they were doing world games were going on, but like it, it just, yeah. I, and they do do that occasionally on the Premier League coverage too. Yeah. Um, they they will yeah. kind of cut around, but um, or they did. I it's been a, a little bit since we've really yeah. watched that as much, but I don't uh, know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it was meant to serve. Yeah. It was an interesting idea, yeah. but it did seem like maybe a primer for people who were just getting into it and yeah. giving it a shot. How many people were paying uh, for that add-on package to just give it a shot? I'm not sure. But they are still doing uh, MLS 360. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. I'm sure it has yeah. evolved a bit. I, I haven't seriously watched that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that I'm really glad that whatever it is Danny Higginbotham had to do to get <laughs> consistently assigned the Union yes. Games. Yes, thank um, you. Thank and God. even his partner, his his commentator um, partner, um, I forget the gentleman's I, name, I, I, but I they're they're decent. They're really yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Danny's very good and his partner is 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 decent. You know, he does mm-hmm. what he, he does when he you know, he does what he does and, mm-hmm. and doesn't get in the way of the action. Yep. Um Pretty straight. Uh, so, from a commenter standpoint, uh, I'm really glad that they settled back into realizing that you know what, it makes sense to to trust the guys who know the team, at least the, in the union's yeah. case, 
yeah. to keep them keep them pro- yep. producing those pro- you know doing those those mm-hmm. games yeah. i imagine that there's other groups that they probably shift around more and i'm i know danny hasn't done every single one mm-hmm. of the union games but i feel like you know where we were at the beginning of the season and where we are now from an announcer's point of view is much better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then as far as the production with the camera work and all that there are still some frustrating moments where they decide to zoom in on a particular <laughs> player while the ball's still in play. And yeah. it's like, and I, you're, you're just messing me up. I can't see what's actually happening. And yeah, <laughs> fortunately, I don't think that they've missed any goals per se, but um, yeah. you know, I definitely think their camera work and production on that side still needs to evolve a little bit further, but I will say, I will congratulate them that it's gotten better. Yeah. From yeah. Where- where it was i may be one of the few people listening to this um who enjoys the mummers parade Mm. um with all it's admitted sometimes glaringly bad Uh, but um but there's a side um uh for the moment uh there were a few years there they were they when I was young, I always wonder if people are try can triangulate our ages from the references we make but anyway um it was pretty consistently on, you know, one of the main Philly channels. And then uh, it got a little bit less popular, bounced around the, you know, sort of secondary mm-hmm. channels. And um, those camera folks did not know how to cover uh, the, the the oddity that is the Mummers Day Parade. And they would be zoomed in on something, you know, and there'd be, oh, yeah. you know, some paper mache dragon coming yeah. up and they'd entirely mm-hmm. miss the big, you know entrance or something and uh yeah it's sometimes uh what that reminds me of when you say that paul you know that they're completely missing everything that's happening because they're mm-hmm. yep. you know all up on some guy's jersey and it's just it's uh yeah i can't help but think of it uh it's gotten better though there too as well yes. um so <laughs> well but um i and the one thing i noticed about um apple is the um they don't um, and I think this is an Apple design thing. They try to keep everything really nice and clean and minimalistic um, kind of, yeah, yeah, minimalistic to the point of actually not providing a whole lot of on-screen information. I don't need, you know, a jumped up screen with ads and, you know, extra stuff, but a little more info would mm-hmm. be helpful. I think that's gotten better too, Yeah. but, um, sometimes it's just like, what, what, what's going on, you know, um, with, with some of the the chirons and things that have been a little bit too, too sparse for my taste, mm-hmm. but, um, mm-hmm. and I know that um, they don't always have the, the correct statistics either. The correct what? Or they the didn't, the correct like, oh, statistics. Yeah. You would sort of, you know, make note of them and then compare them to MLS and they were they, different. They, there was a discrepancy. So, I don't know who was right or wrong yeah, on that yeah. one, but yeah. They were. Not sure if that's Apple or not, yeah. but yeah. It, to me too, one of the, the, this is a question that I don't know the answer and I don't know if it could be answered, but one of the concerns when it went to Apple on it, and we did talk about this was, you know, yes, it's a singular source for all your MLS. And there are the occasional game that's still on Fox soccer, et cetera, but the 99% of the games are now only accessible through Apple and not even just to people who had just regular Apple TV, you have to buy the MLS right. package, which right. even itself, whatever it was, 80 bucks, I forget how much it was. It's like, it's not prohibitive, but it's like, the big question was, is it limiting now the audience um, for MLS to watch, right? Because, you know, if it's on regular TV or cable or something like that, just that would just naturally kind of make its way across the field of view of just, joe q citizen out there like oh here's this mls game let me watch it that's now not possible unless they have apple with the mls soccer package so it'll be interesting to see if the viewing numbers right um how they're affected by just being on apple i I don't know what the answer maybe grew i don't know but it did feel like Apple was struggling a little bit to convince people to buy their package at the beginning of the season. And then I'll they be honest, out a big truck of money and brought Messi over. Yeah, and then that 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 maybe they and yet one of the recent games was free on Apple TV. 
Oh, that's right. So I don't know if I am assuming that means if you have an Apple TV subscription, you didn't need the MLS package yeah. to see it. Um, I, what, one of the ones um, or one, I mean, it was a single game or if it was, um, you know, that weekend or, or what, but I did notice one, at least the, the one of the Philly games, I think it was, it was noted right. as free on yeah. Apple TV. And I was kind of like, huh, yeah. what does that mean? And there have been a few times where it was uh, like, I think it was Target the other day that it was like, uh, one of the offers was like was uh, have a target card and it was like get a month of mls yeah, that's right remember that free you yeah know? so there are some things out there that make me wonder yeah. if it's like this is still not quite where they want the yeah. numbers are not where they want them to be yeah. you know um i know it could just be a promo but yeah. that's kind of a big promo that's not just a hey, mm-hmm. come join us it's exciting mm-hmm. i also I wonder um with with uh with Messi joining the league, I hate to you know keep throwing yeah. it out there, oh, but like, what now. is the international subscriptions looking like now with uh, yeah. know, Apple TV Plus, right. um, and, and and you know <clears throat> what that structure is, you know, outside of the states is you know inside the states we know what it is, but outside the states, like, wh- is it different? You know, do they? What are the what are the costs? How much of that money goes straight into certain players' pockets? Um, you know, et cetera. But I I I just wanted to commend Apple because I've I've noticed it improve. Um mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad that they're listening. I'm glad that they're looking to make things better. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that continues. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, hopefully next year's product is even even higher quality than than where it is now. Because yeah. What we've got a nine year agreement with Apple That's TV right, yeah. really, or 10 year agreement? 10, so nine 10 to go. total, nine to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Well, Sentence? I, yeah, I know. It's no, good. no, no, no. I'm we're, teasing. For 10 years, eight on good behavior. Wait, why did our TV just explode? Um, yeah, I agree. I, I think the product is good. I like it. Um, you know, I, I do enjoy the coverage and I think they're doing a good job. My concern is really just the the viewership, if that's taking a hit. Um, but, I think it's the uh, I think of it as the siloing of MLS. You the know? siloing, yeah, in the sense of it's siloed off from other sports. You know, it's not as yeah. easily accessible. I mean, I know NFL has various things like this too. That yeah. you well, that's because you're assuming that Apple TV isn't planning on buying other sports. I hear pickleball might be in, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But what I mean is, is kind of like you know uh it's not really available i it is available other places like occasionally fs1 has a game here and yeah. there that's mls yeah. related but like it's kind of all packed up in this one yeah. streaming service and, and it's not available elsewhere i mean everybody else uh, most other sports you can at least catch a few games yeah. on on cable for the people who still have that or some other yeah. medium so yeah 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 we'll see that's kind of me that's the big question but Guess we'll find out in the in the coming mm-hmm. years. So well, we've got the final stretch here, and then uh, you know next year. Yeah, so let's get into that. The final stretch. So currently, the Union is sitting in fourth place. Um, uh, they got Orlando in front of them, with New England in front of them, and of course Cincinnati sitting at the top with a very, very, very comfortable lead. They're nine points ahead of uh, second place New England. Um, I mean, this is, again, to stumble over the phrase I stumbled over last time, this is uh, Cincinnati's conference championship to lose at this point. Uh, they are just steamrolling this, or uh, the Eastern Conference. Um, yeah. But with, um, yeah, Union fourth place, we have eight games left left in the regular season. And Chris and I, we were talking, the last game, I think, is October 21st which is five weeks. So they have eight games in five weeks. Yep. That's, I mean, unfortunately that's not an uncommon, uh, you know, tight schedule for this league, especially as more and more teams come into it. But um, yeah, so we got, we got eight games left and um, I want to thank our, our one listener, uh, Nate for writing in. He kind of shared his um, kind of like what he would like to see for the end of the season. And I know he mentioned that he would like to see uh uh, the union face off against Miami in the playoffs and uh, send Miami home. Um, while I totally agree, I'm also okay if Miami doesn't make it to the playoffs. Um, yep. So, um, but yeah, I thought that might be as, this is like a nice little, um, I don't know. What do you guys, what would you like to see in this remaining? You've invoked both M words. 
I'm I expecting there to be a, <laughs> a puff of smoke oh, yeah. and <laughs> a pink devil appearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stand in front of a mirror and say it five times. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I I mean, the union are only two points behind out of second place. I would like them to close that and take second in the East. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they're going to catch Cincinnati um, just because they are 11 points behind them at this point. At this time. Uh, And and, and that would be, it would not only be a really, really great run from the union, but they would need a lot of help from the remainder of Cincinnati's. Uh, exactly. exactly. And you got to know Cincinnati is going to be pushing to set that single season yep. record. Like, I mean, Pat Noonan uh, is probably going to be showing up people. they like, what do you mean? I only win one coach of the match day award. <laughs> Screw all of you. I'm taking yeah. my supporters trophy and uh, supporters shield and going to the postseason. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So yeah, as far as what I would love to see the union do, I would love to see them get the second place in in, yeah. in the Eastern Conference. Um, you know, lock up home field advantage through the playoffs until they reach Cincinnati, and then when they beat Cincinnati, they get you know the union will get the host uh, MLS Cup. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would like to see some of the Cincinnati as players get a serious. Um, uh seriously hooked on cincinnati chili oh and, uh, <laughs> i, was I think that, would that. <laughs> slow them right down uh and uh that that might be a nice little handicap for us so <laughs> maybe it's we should, we should like uh if you've ever had it, it so good it, it's also very filling it's very I, we should like send them like a whole like a uh, catered buffet of cincinnati chili just yeah. just get us hooked on it it's very good very weird very filling it's really good yeah a lot of pasta. Mm-hmm. A lot of pasta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got a carb load. Carb load. <laughs> um, oh, more on that one? No, that's oh, that's just, all I have. Can you go with the Cincinnati <laughs> that's chili? That's all I have. Yeah, I like that. The Cincinnati chili. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more of that, Paul. I kind of oh, agree I see, with you. Yeah, I, I, same. I think the union have what it takes to get the points needed to get to first place, but it also requires too much of Cincinnati not winning, and I don't mm-hmm. see that starting to happen now i think yeah pat noonan's just going to want to lock up this conference you know and just just lock it up so yeah i i think you know because the next was that um well second third fourth I, I think columbus now is right behind us and they're only like a point or two behind they're it's, 50 45 points we're it's at 46. Packed so tight so in a lot of respects like there's not much room for error now for these next remaining games um so yeah, I would like to see, I would like to see the union come out with the second place finish, um, and uh, yeah, and you know, like you said, win the conference, and then, um, um, I guess if we were to face St. Louis MLS Cup, we would actually have to go there if they finish no. first place. No, no, if, if we have the be- if we have better points, I believe we would host, which huh? okay. it is, I believe. Right now, Philadelphia is at 46. St. Louis is at 48. Oh, so, so it's it, just it, about points, not the record? I believe so. Okay. Or better yet, well, if, we're, if we're wrong, someone correct us and shoot us an email. But go ahead, Paul. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's a good point. And, 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 and yeah, I think I think the points essentially are the better record. All right. Um, so. Um, I, I do have actually uh, a real thing to say, not just chili. Um, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, it just, um, interesting that we're chasing second place this year. I mean, last year we were so solidly in first and there's, there is, I can't help but say there's some disappointment, um, with that, but I, I don't know, I cannot remember if I knew where it was. It wasn't a union context or anything else. Um, it was just, a a, a, um, probably some podcast I was listening to where they're making a metaphor that, you know, like once your team has a great season, you know, you expect that the next season is going to be just as great. And, you know, even in spite of yourself, even mm-hmm. if you know, that's not necessarily rational. And, um, you know, so I keep trying to remind myself of, of that and, you know, that it doesn't really mean that all is, is foretold, you mm-hmm. know, because well, the other thing oh, I, 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 I forget which podcast I heard this in, what they were talking about the union. And last year, it's like, yes, the union did amazingly well last mm-hmm. year. But how much of that was players playing beyond 
what you could reasonably expect them to do through the rest of their career Mm -hmm. and how much of it was just that the team fully gelling and fully coming together. Cause like you were just saying, kind of the build on your point, it's like, you know, maybe, maybe they overachieved last year. Maybe this is more and what we would actually expect to see. Um, Maybe it's somewhere between the two. Maybe there's more greatness out there to be found. I Mm -hmm. I don't know. It it was an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Um, as a union fan, I still want them to continue to win and oh, I expect yeah. them to continue to win and I don't want them to continue to win yeah. and do better and, 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 you know, achieve more, more. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it is, it, it'll, we'll have to see where they go. Yeah. I, I wonder too, it's just the, I don't know, the, the character of this team. I almost wonder if second place serves us a little bit better because, you know, when we get hungry, we tend to play better. And so when we're, when we're not in first, that's reason to get a little hungry, you know, and we have something, we still have work to do. We are not at that top position. You know, it just makes and, me think of Jason Kelsey at the Super Bowl hungry dog or at the Super Bowl celebration for the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Hungry dogs run faster. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it kind of, you want to just maintain that balance of just the right amount of hunger you know, not so hungry that you're basically starving and you're playing desperate, not, not hungry. Cause then you start, you know, getting soft and, you know, relaxing a bit. You got to keep that right amount of hunger. So I don't know, maybe second place is a good place for going into the playoffs. We'll see that. Or maybe they need to listen to Ali Bedoya, um, <laughs> fire, <laughs> hype chant, a yeah. hyper speech a couple more yeah. times. Run through a wall. Run through a wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> All right, well, let's just jump into the Cincinnati game since where it's kind of related to what we're talking about here. Um, so Saturday, uh, September 16th, um, Cincinnati comes to Subaru Park. Um, you know, as is often said, this is a six point game, right? It's three points for us to win and three points not to go to Cincinnati. Uh, so this is a mm-hmm. definitely going to be a critical game. Um, yeah, Union yeah, like to- if the union have any shot at winning the supporter shield, yes. this is a must win, exactly. Like, pretty much, if we don't win this game, I, I mean, I don't know if it's mathematically impossible, but I can't see us all, you know, this is it. We there's no way we're going to win first. Um, so yeah, so this should hopefully make for a very exciting game. Um, and I would think that if sta- the stadium will be rocking. Because one thing about the union fans is they understand this team. They understand this league. So <laughs> they're going to show up knowing that the union need need their yeah. need their energy. Yeah. Um, I also would expect that there's probably going to be a pretty healthy Cincinnati a contingent of fans to show up yeah. and, and yeah. watch the game. Um, you know, that, that section, I don't remember which number it is now in the cor- in the Northwest Northeast corner of the stadium should be fairly full. And I would expect that you'll see some, uh, blue and orange around mm-hmm. the stadium as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it'll be like a playoff kind of an atmosphere. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and it'll it be interesting because it'll be a playoff atmosphere, but I don't get the feeling that the teams dislike each other. I agree with that, you know. I mean, especially since there's so many (laughs) ex-union players in Cincinnati, this is gonna be more like a skirmish, you know, between uh, it'll be a big brother, little brother thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, related to that, there's quotes from Curtin basically praising uh, Chris Albright and Pat Noonan, and he's saying that both of them should receive their respective, like, you know. Like for Albright, he thinks he should be sporting executive of the year and Pat Newton should get coach of the year. Um, you know, and let's I know I'm biased, but for Jim Curtin to say that about you, there's gotta be something to it. Um yeah, it does feel like this is like us playing ourselves to a certain degree. And you know, <laughs> staff and players both, it's kind of true. Yep. Um was this not the team? Earlier this season, or no, or am I confusing with another sort of Midwestern team uh, that we, we felt was, he, yeah, who was that? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Was, that was the one that I think uh, we all said that um, it felt like a an actual natural rivalry. 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 I yeah. mean, I, I know Red Bulls, but I, I feel like even Red Bulls is a little manufactured, yeah. although it's, be, it's manufactured. That one has gone from manufactured to to proper but yeah. some, they've, they've tried it with like pretty much any team yeah. that's close to us and yeah. some of them have stuck and some haven't yeah. that one actually feels like a 
proper one. Yeah, because I remember. Anyway, when, I don't want to derail. Well, whatever that Chicago game was, I remember even Herbert's getting like really hot yeah, under the collar. Was, yeah. it's like, there was a lot going you know, on. It yeah. was a little. Yeah. Um, okay. No, I agree with Paul. I, I feel like the, the 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 these two teams. I mean, definitely respect each other, but I don't think there's any like bad blood or animosity. I mean, that doesn't mean they're not going to play all out on Saturday. And we'll see what happens come the uh, 85th minute as to whether or not there's any animosity. But uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I I, I just feel like it's going to, you know, they're going to come out, they're going to play hard, they're going to play fast, and they're going to try to try to beat each other, but not necessarily beat each other. (laughs) Yes, exactly, exactly. I'm surprised you guys aren't a little saltier at uh, Ray Gaddis. Well, I mean, of course, he's really, not even playing these days. He's on the bench. Yeah. But just, I mean, I don't know. It was such a, no, 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 I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, guess what? I'm playing from Cincinnati. Yeah. And I mean, obviously there's a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm the other thing like is, 50% how, kidding here, but. How, how, how do you dislike Ray Gaddis? That's the whole thing, right? How do you dislike <laughs> Ray Gaddis? That's like you disliking know? Tom Hanks. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't dislike him, but I do. I just, I don't know. I guess, I guess it was a surprise move because I felt like he was Tom Hanks or yeah. like Tom Hanks, not, not Tom Hanks. And then, and then this happened. I mean, Lord knows who knows what's really happening. I'm being a little facetious here, but at the same time, it's, it just, I don't know. I was, I was surprised when that yeah. happened because I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Of all the people. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it's the same point too. I mean, with with uh, Gaddis playing right back, he knew Mbizo was there. He knew Harriel was there. He knew Matt Real was there. You know, he 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 recognized that his time as a mm-hmm. serious with getting serious minutes here in the Union yeah. was pretty much over. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. So him moving on, yeah, I I definitely understand the saltiness um because he's such a great you know he seems like such a great person but i think as far as play like the union weren't gonna weren't gonna totally miss him you know yeah yeah he works hard he's a great one-on-one defender but there was stuff that the other players could bring that i've seen like you know i've seen him do things in the attack i've seen harriel do things in the attack that ray would just never have even tried yeah so i wish him well Sure. Um, I certainly expect that whenever he retires and the union decide to honor him, he will get a spot in the uh, ring of honor. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm not really salty at him because mm. I don't think having him play for the union now would would benefit the union. Yeah. I, I I'll be interested to see what does happen with that. If he will get a place in the ring, like I don't not on. because he's betrayed. I'm not no, trying no. to be this dramatic, but like. I do wonder. I mean, I know he played with us for a very long time, but um, I'll be curious to see what happens. I feel like with time going on, he's fading a little bit from the collective memory. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong. I I, I mean, I mean, Paul, I totally agree, right? Like, I I remember being caught a little off guard, like, wait, Ray's coming out of retirement to play for Cincinnati? I thought that's why he left us, was to go to retire. Yeah. But, you know, but it's Ray Gaddis, right? So it's kind of like, you know, it's he's he's just how do you not look? You know, how how can you be angry at Ray Gaddis? But um, but yeah, I wonder about that because I remember like when he left, I'm like, oh, he's got to get his name on the ring, he's got to get his name. It's only a matter of time. But and I mean, I might be I'm probably wrong on this, right? Uh, seldom in doubt, often wrong, but uh, I don't know if he'll get on that ring now mm-hmm. because it's it's been a little while, right? Yeah. But you know, he de- I think he deserves it. Whether or not the the zeitgeist is there for it to happen, we'll see. I think we all know now who holds grudges on this podcast, and it's me. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Which brings us to our next segment: Who does Christy have a grudge with this week? <laughs> Christy, who do you dislike? <laughs> Um, you know, they're just talking about the Cincinnati game. The other in- interesting thing in this one is that. Um, Bedoya will be missing this for yellow card accumulation, and so will Lucho <laughs> Acosta from yeah. Cincinnati. And, and Lucho is, you know, arguably an MVP candidate. Yeah. yeah. And so that's a big loss for the for for Cincinnati. I agree. I feel like the the loss we have on the field by not having Bedoya. Don't know if that's as great as the loss Cincinnati might have for not having Acosta on the field. We'll see. I would agree. Uh, we'll see. Um, 
Uh, any uh, thoughts about what you want to see out of the game on Saturday? I know we kind of, I'm kind of, I like this that we don't really necessarily predict scores, but like, what would you like to see in the game on Saturday? Yeah. I want to see the the, the, the triangle of death, uh, you know, continue to, to, to yeah. be threatening. Yeah. You know, I'd love it if they ran up some goals, but Cincinnati's defense is no joke. Mm-hmm. And I don't expect that, but uh, just continuing to get their chances and putting yeah. them on frame. That's what I want. I, yeah. That's what I want to see. Do I expect to see it? Not entirely. Yeah, right. Because if anyone's going to crack the code, that is the Philly Union formation. You know, it's, it's Philly Union West. It's going to be Philly Union West. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. No, I agree. I'd like to see. I want to see our uh, those gears turning, you know, smoothly on the field. You know, the triangle of death, that diamond midfield, and then just our four guys in the back just locking it down. Um, but it's Cincinnati. You know, you're not nine points ahead for no reason. Yep. So um, yep. I think it's it, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a really exciting game. I could see it being um, I could see it being a higher scoring game. Yeah, I could see I, I don't I don't envision like a, a nil nil game. I, I definitely see. Yeah punches being landed um hopefully we just land a lot more and i also hope i mean there's lots of things that i wish for in this game i I think the one that's most likely to happen is the triangle of death getting getting aggressive i would Mm -hmm. love to see uh, love to see the union defense locking down a shutout Mm -hmm. um i'd love to see uh you know some better midfield play out of the union but i I do think it's that triangle needs to you know gosh dog Carranza and aura mm-hmm. uh, need to get back on the same page i would also love to see it start raining donuts oh but, that's the other thing i wish the union don't give up a goal in the first 25 minutes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah christy's being quiet i guess there's nothing she wants to see out of this game i just want him to win yeah Beat him. <laughs> there you go plain and simple yep keeping it simple this weekend yeah Rude is Christy eight, and she wants the union to win. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> She's a woman of simple means. Her simple needs. <laughs> All right. Well, um, you guys have anything else you want to share? I'm today? good. No, I think that's it. All right. Well, hey, if you got anything you want to share, uh, you can find us on our website at amorephillyunion.com. Um, yeah. Keep those emails coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really nice to be getting some uh, correspondence from you guys out there listening. Um, hey, we'll give shout outs, birthdays. I don't know. This is all new. You help us. You can help us figure out where we're going uh, with respect to this podcast. But anyway, you can drop us a message at our emails, um, pod at a more Um, you can find us on, um, the website or the social media site, formerly known as Twitter, which is now called X is a more Philly U Instagram, YouTube threads. We are a more Philly union. Uh, if you haven't checked out our playlist on Spotify, it's I like it. It's very uh, it's very eclectic, I think would be the best word for it. Um, but you can find it on um, Spotify under a more Philly union. Um, and again, keep downloading our podcast wherever you get yours. Um, spread the word, subscribe, like, comment, you know, drop us that message. Help us get those downloads so we can hit that thousand download um, goal. And we Throw some love to the Philadelphia Union um, Foundation. Foundation. So thanks for tuning in for another episode of A More Philly Union. We are your host. I'm E. I'm C. And I'm Paul. Go Go Union! Union! Welcome to a special episode of a more Philly Union. I'm so not going to say anything. So let Paul and Christy take it from here. I told Good you. night, guys. Here's the thing: as soon as it's, it's going to be like Michigan J Frog. As soon as the the hello, my baby. Hello, my <laughs> yeah, but like then the guy comes. But only when they're not watching. Yeah, exactly. That's or nice. mystery men, a kid who could turn himself invisible, but only when nobody was looking it's at looking. him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or Snuffleupagus. Yeah. Back when he was still imaginary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, Snuffy.